Now I took this really nice picture at a nearby viewpoint catching the sunrise and so we're going to use that in this tutorial today. What's up everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to walk you through the OpenCV library, which is a library that lets you edit images in Python. This is a beginner friendly video, so I'm going to just walk you through how you can get started with the library. So getting up and running and doing some basic things. And then we're going to have a project at the end. And what we're going to do in that project is we're going to blur images and that's going to be quite fun. With that said, let's get started. So I'm going to start off by writing the classic if name main check. If you've watched my other Python project videos, you know, I like to start off every program with this. This essentially tells Python uh, where we want to start running the program. And in this case, we're going to run the main function or we're going to start with the main function. And I'm going to define it up here and we'll just leave it empty for now. So the library we're going to be using today is the OpenCV library. It's not only available in Python, but it's also available in other languages. And to import it in Python, of course, we're going to install it later on. But to import it, we type import CV2. And now we've got that imported, we can start writing code to work with the library. Actually, I'm going to show you very quickly how you can go about installing the library. So I'm going to open up the terminal and type pip install opencv-python. And this will install the library. In this case, I've got it installed already. Usually in my other Python project tutorial videos, I have a requirements.txt file that I like to put in the root of the project. And that usually contains all the requirements that a person would need to run um, the program. But given that there's only one requirement um, or one library that we're using in this project, it's fine for us to just install it like this. So let's start off with a simple example of opening up the uh, image. And what I want to do is just sort of demonstrate how you do that with OpenCV. So the way it works is you create an image object and this image object is going to be an OpenCV image object. So in this case, um, the variable I'm going to call it image and then I'm going to call CV2 and the function that we're after is imread. Um, which is basically shorthand for image read, I imagine. And essentially you pass in the image location. And given that the file is in the current directory, all I have to do is type cycling sunrise.jpg because that is the file path of the image. Now this function actually accepts another parameter called flag. And this flag basically describes how we want to open the image. And what I mean by that is the color. Now, by default, uh, one is the value that will indicate just open the image as it is with its existing color, right? It's not going to make any change to it. And actually, if you leave it empty, by default, um, it will have the flag being set to one. But you can be explicit and actually pass that in. Now, the reason why that's useful is because in a second, I'm going to show you what happens when we change that to a different value. For now, we're just going to leave it like that. And the next thing that we're going to do is actually open the image. To do that, we're going to make use of another function called imshow. And this function accepts two parameters. The first is basically a title. So what's going to happen is it's going to open up this image in a window and the window we can set a title. So let's do that. So I'm going to call this, uh, I don't know, viewpoint sunrise. Actually, no, it doesn't make sense. Sunrise viewpoint. <laughs> And then the second parameter is the image. And this is going to be the image object that we uh, defined here on line five. Now you'd think at this point, this is enough to get the image to run. But actually, if we run it like this, what will happen is the image will disappear instantly. Annoyingly, you actually have to add one more line of code and that's CV2 wait key. And essentially the way this works is think of it like a break. Think of it like telling Python that, hey, we want to sort of wait at this line of code and we don't want to continue until we press a key on the keyboard, right? And so the parameter this accepts is the number of seconds. So for example, if I was to call a CV2 wait key and pass in 10, this is gonna wait for 10 seconds. And if I haven't pressed the key or anything, it's just gonna continue to the next line of code, right? Now, um, because we don't have a specified number of seconds, if you leave it uh, with zero, that's just going to wait infinitely until we do something. And so that's useful because we're just going to press a key or we can just even quit the window and that'll be enough uh, to first show the image, but also dismiss it. Right. So let's give this program a run. So I want to open up the terminal in VS Code and type Python. Uh, main.py tap enter and as you can tell it's blinking and that's this line of code kicking in here and if I switch over here you can see the image has been opened in the window and it's got the title sunrise viewpoint that we gave it earlier and at this point again it's sort of waiting for us to take action and all I have to do is tap a key on the keyboard and it will close uh, the window. 
So that looks good. The last thing I want to briefly show you is what happens when we pass in a different uh, value here. So for the flag parameter I mentioned, I want to pass in the value zero. Now zero basically tells the image read function that we want to open up in grayscale. In other words, almost change the color of the image and we want it to be grayed out. So with that said, now let's give this program a run. So I'm going to open up the terminal again, type python main.py, tap enter, and this time, It'll open up the image, but here you can see it's grayed out. And this actually looks quite nice, to be fair. Um, yeah, so you can see it's applied a grayscale. And yeah, that actually looks much better than I thought it would. Um, but yeah, so uh, now that you've got a better understanding of how you can open an image using the library, uh, let's move on to blurring images. Right, so let's walk through the process of applying a blur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. And then what we'll do is we'll you know, press enter a couple of times. And here we're going to write uh, the code to blur the image. I'm going to start off by creating a variable called blurred image. And essentially what we're going to do is, as you can probably guess, we're going to call another function. And this function is going to allow us to apply what's known as a Gaussian blur. A Gaussian blur isn't something that's just specific to OpenCV. Generally speaking, in the world of images and transformations, it's a way of applying a blur to an image. Unfortunately, there is an out of the box function that we can call, uh, which is CV2, and then it's gonna be Gaussian with two S's followed by blur. And then here we're going to pass in a few parameters. Now the first parameter we're gonna pass in is the image itself. And that's easy enough because we've created that above. And so that looks good. And then this is where things get interesting. Now the second parameter is what's known as the size parameter or it's referred to um, as the kernel. And the way it works is it's uh, two values that you pass in where well, it's a tuple um, that contains two values. And these values describe the kernel of the Gaussian blur transformation. Now I'm going to explain just enough so you understand how it works. If you want a more detailed overview and you want to understand the math involved, then I will put a link in the description below and feel free to reference or um, look over that. When you think of an image stored on a computer, uh, the way to understand how it's stored is it is a collection of pixels. Each pixel contains information about its color, but the most important thing to understand is that all of these pixels come together to form the overall image. The way this algorithm works is it goes through every single pixel in the image and it builds what's known as a surrounding area. And that's essentially this kernel here. You essentially define how big this kernel is. So for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in 15 by 15. But the most important thing to take away is that depending on the image that you've taken, you might need to adjust these values. And so there might be a bit of tweaking involved, uh, again, depending on you know the image that you have. The last parameter is called the sigma parameter, and it defines how wide uh, the curve should be in the kernel. Now, again, this gets quite mathy. The most important thing that you need to know is that if you leave it as zero, what it will do is it'll calculate it for you, right? Um, if you leave it anything but zero, so if I put one here, for example, that uh, gives it a value that's gonna work with, usually that blurs the image more. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna leave it at zero for now because we're gonna control the kernel and the kernel is gonna allow us to control the level of blur that we have in the image. So now we're ready to write out the file and save it as a separate image file. And to do that, first of all, I'm gonna get rid of these two uh, lines. And then what we'll do is we'll call a function called CV2 M right, and essentially this is going to take uh, all the first parameter is basically the file name that we want to write, and in this case I'm going to call it cycling sunrise, and we'll just sort of say blurred blurred dot jpg, and then the second parameter is of course the blurred image. So I'm just going to copy that, put that here, and then what that will do is it'll write out the file, and then now if I run the program python main.py what will happen is as you can tell on the left hand side it's created an image and if i click that it will open up and you can see a slight blur it's not that blurred so if i go back to this image here you can tell it's quite crisp and clear here you can see um somewhat of a slight blur but i think it could do with more of a blur so let's actually change the values here so what we'll do is we'll make the kernel a bit stronger i'm going to set it to 35 35 so i think that looks good and again now if you run it this time and then if i click onto the blurred image 
now here you can see a much stronger blur has been applied so that's it really if you haven't already please do give the video a like so it can get boosted in the algorithm and if you're learning python and you want to see more open cv videos as well as other python project videos do consider subscribing until then thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next video peace